I'll just go with that. Okay. And so this is the first Laracon, and uh, it's just really crazy to go from a year and a half ago we had Laravel uh, 1.0, and now we're at our first conference. So I think we're on pace with Rails actually. Yeah, like Ian said, thanks so much for coming out. You know, this is just really an honor to have so many people interested in the framework and uh, you know, willing to travel. I think we have people from several different countries, Australia, Iceland, uh, South America. So that's just really awesome. Thanks so much for coming out. Um, so um, also, uh, you know, thanks to our venue for this has been an awesome venue, and they've really gone out of their way to help us make it a uh, you know a really professional awesome conference for our first time around. Uh, thanks so much to Ian and Userscape for really uh, supporting Laravel from day one. And, you know, it wouldn't be anywhere close to where it is today without their support and giving me time to work on features and just a lot of stuff like that. So uh, thanks so much to them. And uh, real quick, as far as our schedule goes, we'll have four talks today. And then uh, we'll have a, a cocktail hour after that. And then I think we'll have uh, five or six talks tomorrow. And, uh, and then we'll have another after party. And uh, another quick announcement is the restrooms are upstairs to the right. And uh, I think that's all the important uh, stuff. Who am I? Uh, I'm Taylor Rockwell. I'm Taylor Rockwell in IRC. Taylor Rockwell on Twitter. So uh, I'm 26 years old from Arkansas, uh, down south. And uh, before I got into PHP, I actually did a lot of dot network and the enterprise for ABF Freight. So it's a totally different world. PHP. This is like the Wild Wild West out here at PHP. So, uh, <laughs> um, I even did a little COBOL with the mainframe. I uh, saw some programs that were older than I am. So uh, I created Learn Bell at the, at the start of 2011, which I'll talk a little bit more about. And uh, I'm a husband, I have a couple of kids, baby artisans. So uh, <laughs> I'm going to start on Learn Bell soon. Uh, today I'm going to talk a little bit about the vision, the voyage, and the village. Kind of an easy way to remember it. Uh, the vision is kind of how did I, what made me write Laravel, or what did I, what were my philosophy or my core goals for writing the framework. And then the voyage, uh, how, did, how did we get to this point, and then the village, which is you guys, and the way that uh, the community has contributed to the framework. Okay, so the vision. And it starts here. Does this look familiar? <laughs> I think most people are probably familiar with uh, Code Igniter from LS Labs. It's a cool framework. Uh, it's got a lot of users. And uh, I, I like it. I mean, I loved it. When I, when I first started doing PHP, I used Code Igniter. I thought it was like the greatest thing since sliced bread. Like I, my code is so organized. I've got models and views and controllers. And uh, I, I used Code Igniter for a few months. And I wrote, well, I wrote a few libraries for it in an IOC container, which is exactly like the IOC container in Laravel. And I uh, made a few posts on the forum and really enjoyed my time with Code Igniter, but it quickly became a Code Igniter core hackathon for me. Uh, I wanted a few extra features like built in authentication, uh, templating, I wanted a good ORM, you know, this, just the common stuff Code Igniter people talk about a lot that they want in the framework. And the more I started adding these things, the more I found myself uh, really changing the core of the framework and really just hacking it in a sense. And it got to the point where I just knew I needed, I needed something totally different uh, to build my applications on. And uh, I had some cool ideas from .NET, and I had some cool ideas from Ruby and Sinatra and Rails. And I wanted a way to kind of combine some of those concepts I had from both environments into, into PHP. So, uh, well first I could do something else. I don't have to write my own framework. I don't have to reinvent the wheel, so to speak. So I looked around, like, you know, people have four code or nine or four, and uh, some frameworks have come out of that. I could use Kobana. But the problem there I found was, you know, the lack of documentation. I just couldn't, I just couldn't get up to speed on Kobana, you know, as fast as I wanted to. And, uh, or I could use Symfony, which was a little heavy handed. You know, I thought it was a lot of configuration. You know, I read the docs for like 10 minutes and still had no idea how to log someone in. You know, and that's like the first thing I look for on any framework is how, how can I launch someone in. If I can't find it in like five minutes, man, I just don't want to use it. <laughs> um, so uh, after looking around, you know, I was kind of a naive PHP developer, so I did it the uh, classic PHP way, a clean slate, you know, I'm going to write my own, my own framework. And uh, I started working on it in January or so, January, February 2011. 
And I just did it after my wife went to bed. I stayed for a few hours ago so, and hack around. And I probably wrote, scrapped everything, rewrote, you know, just the basic routing layer like a hundred times. Just trying to figure out, you know, how to write frameworks in PHP because I didn't know, you know, that much at the time. I kind of looked at Code Igniter and saw how to do it. And so eventually I kind of got to a, you know, once I got a few months under my belt, I started to figure out really how I wanted things to look. And, you know, one common criticism of this could be, you know, did I reinvent the wheel or, you know, should you reinvent the wheel? And this is something that's parroted a lot, which I don't really like because. I don't really like programmers making other programmers feel guilty for writing code, you know, or trying to control what other programmers should do. It's like, I'll write whatever I want to write, you know, I'll have fun doing it. And, um, you know, just because something exists, like just because an ORM exists, doesn't mean that a better one can be written. It doesn't mean that a better ORM than Eloquent could be written or Doctrine could be written. And anyone's free to try, you know, I hope, I hope there is. You know, I, I want to see the, the community move forward. And so I just want to use the best stuff. So, uh, I didn't feel too guilty. I don't think you should either. You know, if you're thinking about writing a library and something already exists that performs that function, you know, if you think you can do it better, then go for it. You know, don't feel bad about reinventing the wheel. But there is a there is a line which I'll talk about later, which I felt like we didn't need to reinvent the wheel on. Okay, so if I'm going to write a framework, I, I need some goals. And here's some of the goals for me. One, get stuff done. That's like goal number one, I need to get stuff done either for myself or for a company or uh, for a client. I wanted expressive readable code, you know. Just speaking with my experience in Code Igniter, it's a little older, you know, it's this session, set user data for session, for session data. I just wanted something like session put or cache git or route git or a, and a readable ORM, kind of like active record in Rails, which I was like heavily inspired by. And then I, uh, I wanted all the tools I need for a basic web application. So I wanted easy authentication. I wanted to be able to log someone in. Uh, I needed migrations, you know, for working with Ian and Eric at Userscape. So that was a tool we needed. And uh, I wanted an easy way to interact with my database, to uh, work with JSON, you know, just common web application needs. And, uh, you know, I tried to make the code read like English, make it intuitive, make it expressive so that when a new developer comes on your team, you know, they can look at the code. It's not, um, it's not too hard to get up to speed on what, you know, input get or cache get. It, it looks pretty, pretty easy to read. So even beginners can get started <coughs> with the framework pretty easily. And I want the API to be ele or elegant, you know, and, and just uh, really simple. I also knew that documentation is king. From the very first day I started writing Laravel, I knew like I had that awesome documentation from day one, like the very first day it came out, even in beta. Because I saw that even a program like Kohana, which I thought was technically superior probably to Codeigniter, the documentation was lacking so that even Codeigniter, which was behind it in terms of technology, was way in front of it in terms of users and community and stuff like that, just off the documentation alone, I think. I mean, that's why. I started using Code Igniter. Anytime I look at a new library, if the website looks cool, it's like, yeah, I'm going to use this. You know, compared to a website that has no documentation or it's plain. So documentation was king. So, uh, you know, I knew from the very first day I wanted to have full documentation. Okay, so that was kind of my vision for Laravel. Uh, if anyone has a couple questions on the vision part, I'll, I'll take a couple now and I'll have some time later before we move on to kind of how I would revision to. Okay, I'll some time for questions later. So. Okay, the voyage. What, what was really important to me, and I want to talk about, a little bit about Lyra before in specific here, but I want to focus on what matters. And by that I mean, take for example, like parsing an HTTP request. Um, there's only really like one right way to do that. You know, there's an HTTP protocol, there's a standard. And for me to kind of reinvent that wheel, I did feel like it was a little, would be a little silly because, for example, the Symphony component, like HTTP Foundation, they are already written that really boring code and I don't want to have to write code like that. That's like the worst, most boring, tedious code to write ever. And so, I just want to focus on what, what matters for Laravel and what makes Laravel distinct from other frameworks, what makes it unique from Symphony, or what makes it unique from Code Igniter or Kamada. And so these are just a few things. There's more that make it unique. Uh, you know, the routing is really simple. 
Uh, it's kind of like Sinatra, you know, route get with the route URI, then you have a, a, a closure callback. So uh, another thing is Eloquent, which is, you know, pretty unique to PHP. It's a nice active record ORM. Um, I don't know if any of the frameworks that come bundled quite like with an ORM quite like Eloquent. Also, our blade templating engine is unique to Layer Metal. Um, it's got a lot of common features like section and yield and stuff you would see in Twig or, uh, or uh, something you would see in Rails. And we have bundled in authentication that's like super easy. Um, it's like pretty painless to get someone logged into your application. I know this is one thing that, you know, if you go to like a frameworks forum, like the first question people ask when they use the framework is how do I log someone in? How do I like protect this members only area? And so I knew I wanted this to be easy. And by focusing on these things, it really frees up my time, which is limited. You know, in all of our time, we all have, all of us have day jobs, we to work on Laravel all day. And so if we can focus on the things that make Laravel distinct and unique, then that's gonna, that's gonna pay off more than if we're, if we're spending all our time like writing like console helpers or parsing HTTP requests or boring junk like that. So focusing on what matters has been huge for Laravel, and I'll explain uh, a little bit about what saved us so much time. And uh, one of the main things is Symphony, which like Laravel and Symphony, <coughs> they just don't seem like, it's like oil and water, you would think. They just wouldn't mix. You know, they would just be, Symphony is like a million configuration files and XML and YAML and all kinds of weird format. And Laravel is pretty light and simple, I think, comparatively, I hope. <laughs> I hope you guys think so. Um, but one cool thing about Symphony is that they have all of their, uh, components split out and I can use any one of them individually. And so what we did with Laravel 4 and even Laravel 3 is use HTTP foundation like I mentioned. For Laravel 4, we're using a, a console component, which you may have seen, which has made the artisan command line 10 times better. It's got colors, it's got help screens. <laughs> so uh, we're, artisan has gotten a lot more modern. Um, we're using the routing engine uh, because you know matching requests to routes is really you know, that's pretty simple. I can offload that one with that code to them, let them maintain it, let them test it. And uh, I don't have to worry about that. You know, that gives me more time to focus on cool, eloquent stuff, focus on uh, all these great new components we have in Laravel 4, like the background queue API, like uh, baked in mail. So using Symphony has been, that's been a weight off my shoulders, really, you know, being able to leverage the community, being able to embrace kind of a wider PHP community and uh, not waste time on a lot of older plate code. So, um, another thing we've done is embrace Composer, which like a year ago when Composer first came out, I think, or so, and Laravel 3 was coming out, we had bundles, you know, some people mentioned Composer, and a lot of people were like, oh, it's a new pair, you know, it's gonna suck. And <laughs> no, no one wanted to use it, I don't think, and it's taken a little time to get some packages, but now I think people are starting to appreciate the benefit of Composer. There's a ton of packages out there. Um, and it's been really nice. I, mean, I know even at Userscape, you know, we've grabbed like that package Carbon. Have you seen Carbon for working with dates? It's just a really cool way to work with dates. I can just say Carbon yesterday. Just really expressive. So packages like that are just so easy to integrate with the uh, Laravel 4 now that we have Composer that's kind of driving everything in terms of dependencies. And uh, it's just really great to say if you want to use Mongo, just grab Mongo, uh, I think it's Mongo, there's some Mongo document mapper on packages, you can just grab it, drop it in. It's gonna handle all the auto-loading for you so you don't have to require in classes manually, and any of that, and you can just get started using it. So Composer, Composer's been really cool uh, for me and I, I hope for you too, you know, as, as you've tried out Laravel 4, maybe in other projects. And uh, so by embracing these things, that's given us time to build great new features in Laravel 4. And uh, some of the things we've added are uh, mail, which we can just say mail send now. We don't have to like pull in Swift Mailer and go through all their crazy configuration and, and uh, requiring a bunch of files. We can just configure it to mail right in uh, Laravel 4. And related to that, we have password reminders built in now. Uh, I don't know if you've seen those, but you can just say password remind and it will send the email, which you can configure the view it uses. You can say password reset, which will reset their password, clear the row out of the password reminder token table, and uh, 
I hated writing that code. I had to write it for UserScape, and I hated writing so much that I wrote after my initial letter before because I never ever wanted to write code like that again. It's just so <laughs> tedious. Uh, Another thing we've added, which is probably maybe my favorite feature in Laravel 4, and uh, Zach Chris Miller is going to talk about it a little bit, I think tomorrow, is Q. And this is, uh, we're actually ahead of Rails on this, I think, by the way. Uh, this is a unified Q API, which, are you familiar with uh, something like uh, RabbitMQ or Beanstalk, like a background message Q? Okay, this is one API that can talk to, you know, it can have drivers, kind of like authentication has drivers, how we have an eloquent driver. Uh, you could write like a HTTP basic driver. So this one queue can talk to, right now we have Beanstalk, which is that you can run locally, you know, on your network or machine. We also have an Amazon SQS driver, which is, you know, up on uh, Amazon Web Services. It's, so it would be a cloud-based queue. You know, if you're using a like, you know, like app file or PHP file runs on AWS, so you might want to leverage uh, SQS in that in uh, that situation. And Q uh, also has we have an artisan command called Q listen, which will start up a Q listener and will just stay running. It won't come back once you start it. And so you can use supervisor or something like that to just keep that guy running and offload. Like for instance, sending mail, which would like to make your web app pretty slow. You offload that to the Q. And uh, I did that in our application, I swear I sped it up, sending mail, like the response, it was like 10 times more responsive after we did that. So it's just a huge uh, speed increase if you're doing some heavy lifting on the back end. Okay, so uh, those are some of the great features we've been able to build because we offload stuff to the wider community like Symphony. It's given me a lot more time to focus on this kind of stuff, focus on improving documentation. And so uh, that's been really, uh, really beneficial for me personally, and I think will pay off for the community as a whole. You know, as we embrace uh, some of this other code that's been written, it's well tested. I think it's going to really pay off for us. Hey, uh, any questions on some of these features or Laravel <coughs> in general? I have a one. I, it seems that you must have considered Zen framework as well as Symfony. How did you? Did you make a decision between the two, or was there a maturity? I actually didn't consider it. That you didn't much. consider it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and not because I don't respect you, but because uh, I think it's, I mean, you had to kind of keep in mind I was kind of new to PHP sure. from .NET, so I'm like, I didn't know that, I didn't know that much about Zen. You know, I, I knew Symphony just from Googling a little bit, and uh, I knew Code Nighter because I used it, but I, I wasn't familiar with the entire landscape of PHP. I never used Pair. I, I never used PHP before 5.3. So, like the history of Zen, you know, that's well established. I, I wasn't familiar with, so it, it, I just didn't consider it as strongly. Not because I don't respect Zen or think it's good, but because I just didn't know. You know, so. I'm just curious. What brought you from like .NET uh, to PHP? Was that like work related or? Um, yeah. So, when I was writing .NET, there were. Um, I had a few side business ideas, you know, that I wanted to try outside of my day job. And hosting and setting up .NET on a host is just, it's a little more expensive and it's not quite as straightforward as like throwing files up there over FTP or whatever. And so PHP, I had kind of seen it in college just doing a project and I knew it was really easy to get hosting, super cheap. So I was like, I'll just, I'll give it a shot. And uh, so that's how I made the jump from .NET to PHP with me trying to build these, just little projects I had in mind and I needed a quick way to do it. And also, once I got once I got to PHP, I really liked it. Even though a lot of people bash on PHP because .NET, it, even though it's great, I like .NET. It's just super verbose. So like, it was really refreshing for me to kind of get from this really verbose environment to just being do whatever I want. Like, I mean, no no type checking, no anything, which is crazy dangerous sometimes. <laughs> but it just kind of felt freeing, you know. And uh, it was just night and day different. So I liked it. Any more before we keep going? Okay, so uh, the village, which is you guys. And um, when I first started writing Laravel, I knew I wanted an awesome community. I knew how important that would be because Code Igniter has had a great community in the past, and there's tons of people write tutorials, books, and it's just got a lot of libraries, a lot of smart people working with it. So I, w I knew I needed something like that for Laravel to be successful. And there's a few things that I had in mind how I wanted the community to be. I wanted it to be friendly, you know. Uh, 
I didn't want a lot of a lot of drama or kind of like ego clashing. You know, we're all trying to learn together. And no matter how what level you're at, there's always someone that's you know you look up to as a programmer. You know, even even the highest guys, you know, have the, their code heroes. So I didn't want any elitism or anything like that. I wanted everyone to help each other and uh, get a lot of contribution from the community. And that's really that's really been awesome. We've had a lot of people write tutorials. Uh, people like Jeffrey Way and uh, Net Touch have done some awesome stuff with. Um, videos and uh, just other articles that people have contributed that I think have really helped Laravel grow because these great resources have really built up the community. We've even got books. Uh, I got a signed copy of Sean McCool's book the other day, so I was pretty excited about that. <laughs> I, got, I got a signed copy of Dan's book, he's like Laravel legend. And uh, so these, these books are really cool. I'm really glad that these guys have you know, taken the time to write these books uh, that are really great and walk you through you know, the first steps with Laravel all the way to building, you know, full applications. IRC is like a constant party. I don't know what you guys do all day. I go to IRC and it's just like constant chatter. There's like 200 million people in there. And it's just, that's really cool. I'm, I get really excited when I go in there just to see how many people are going to be in there today. And it just seems like it just keeps going up, you know. I remember the other, I mean, when it first started, it was like, three people, and what was crazy is those three people had like so much sway in the framework, you know, because I wanted people to use it, so, you know, anything they would complain about or say, it was like, holy cow, I gotta change this, like, right now. <laughs> 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 no one's gonna be using Laravel if I don't. And, uh, you know, as the community has grown, it's kind of balanced out a little, so not any one person has too much sway. Um, yeah, but IRC is a great place for people to go. Uh, you know, ask questions, they get responses so fast, but people are just always in there, you know, uh, chatting or goofing off. <coughs> First time I met Dale was in IRC, I think I almost kicked him out of the chat room. So. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, so that's just been really great. You know, it's created a really welcoming environment, regardless of skill level. I think people feel like they can get, or they can approach Laravel and learn it really easily because of the work you guys have put in. So thanks so much for that, you know, to you guys. And uh, you're a huge part of the success of Laravel. We also have great companies and projects embracing Laravel. Uh, Userscape, you know, is doing a lot of stuff with it. We're doing Snappy, which is a cool to help this product. Um, we even got some open source projects, projects like Pyro and uh, Phil Sturgeon has been. The cool thing about Pyro is they've actually embraced Eloquent without using all of Laravel so far. So uh, the next version of Pyro, they've been able to leverage that eloquent component, which we split out. And uh, I think they've done a really great job, and they've really seem to be moving a little faster than that. And I think that stuff like that's going to be great for Laravel. You know, these well-respected open source projects, as they embrace the framework, that's going to be that's going to be good for us. It's going to bring more people in, and uh, more people means more ideas and more minds contributing to the framework. And uh, we've even got the U.S. government. Laravel, actually. I was out here in September, and the Small Business Administration is building on Laravel, so usually when someone asks, like, do you know how many companies using Laravel? Like, if anyone, like, is anyone actually using it, that's what I'm saying, because it sounds, sounds kind of cool. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's, that's been really uh, great for the community. And uh, one, thing, one of the things I wanted to avoid with Laravel was two things, stagnation and elitism. And I think what I mean by stagnation is, I mean, stagnation personally, like for you, and uh, as a developer, we can kind of stagnate in our skill level. And I think, I think maybe some people could say Code Igniter had a little bit of this problem where the framework didn't really grow with you as a developer in the sense that it didn't give you a lot of options to embrace like advanced design patterns and stuff like that. And once you got to a certain level, it's just kind of the same, kind of the same old thing. You know, no one was really pressing it forward with any real uh, innovative ideas. And uh, the cool thing I like about Laravel, and I hope you do too, is uh, you learn the basics of Laravel. Like say you just start with routing, and that's kind of where you start. You set up a few basic routes, some basic filters, uh, get people logged in. But then it kind of grows with you as a developer, and as you uh, watch tutorials like on inversion of control or dependency injection or other big fancy words like that, uh, the framework kind of grows with you because it has IOC built in. You know, you don't have to use it. You can, you can use Laravel, even Laravel 4, without knowing anything about IOC, but when you get to that point, you know it's there. The framework's there ready to grow with you. 
if you're not writing unit tests, you know, you can learn about them. Of course, no firm makes you write unit tests or forces you to, but you start reading about it, you think you want to start doing it. You know, it's got great testing facilities built in, especially with Laravel 4. The testing is just so much better than Laravel 3 um, because we've adopted a browser kit and non-crawler uh, components, which actually lets you like, fill out forms, click buttons in your test, do all kinds of crazy stuff. So. I think it's been a really great thing for Laravel is that uh, a beginner to PHP even can write some basic routes, but someone from even more advanced languages or that knows more advanced patterns can just kind of, can kind of grow with the framework. So, uh, and then the other the other extreme I wanted to point was elitism, which I think maybe Kohana could be faulted with this. I don't, I don't know. I don't want to step on too many toes, but. Uh, with Kohana, like a lack of documentation, if you if you go to the forums and see people complain about that, they'll just say, read the source, you know, or they, they don't they want to avoid newcomers, I think, on purpose. I think they would be okay with even saying that. They want their community to be intel, you know, uh, well advanced developers that know how to read the source and figure things out on their own. And you know, even though embracing people who are new to PHP or new to frameworks. It adds some overhead to the community. You know, you, we get questions in IRC, and some people may think, oh, like, how could they ask this? But I think it's really important that we embrace all, all levels of developers, help them grow, you know, help them be personally fulfilled in their uh, development career, even though it's going to add some, some overhead, you know, some support overhead. So I wanted to have great documentation, great community. You guys, you guys have been so great at, uh, you know, I see people ask questions in IRC, you know, even basic questions. And people never, you know, never kick them out or like cuss them out for not knowing how to do not know this. And I've always been really helpful. <coughs> so, uh, any other questions on the community or how, how I've tried to manage the framework of the community? Can't see you about Hammer Batch. We need proper trolls about the fire designs. No, I tried to convince you I want fire designs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you believe Wired Science is kind of a, a legendary code matter troll. I try to think that I that I once in fact Wired Science. No, no, we don't have any problems in the community. Everyone's really great. And, uh, you know, it's been really, it's been really a pleasure to work with the community. Really, a lot of smart people. Did, uh, uh, did you ever uh, actively uh, talk to the core developers from any of the other frameworks to try to get them on board with Laravel? Or yeah, I, ha I have talked to um, I have talked to Fabian from Symphony, who's the lead guy. He, he's aware of Laravel. He thinks Laravel is cool, um, and uh, you know he's glad to see us using these components. And I think I think he wants to. I think he has no problem embracing Laravel, even though he is the Symphony core developer. You know, we're we're becoming one of the biggest consumers of their components. I mean, we use console, HTTP foundation, browser kit, on crawler, routing, uh, HTTP kernel. You know, so we use seven or eight components. And uh, yeah, I think he's supportive of Laravel. I think he sees what we're trying to do. You know, I think he sees that we're trying to make these great components accessible and kind of build a more opinionated framework with the ORM, with the templating. So, yeah, I think he likes it. Sean, you have one? Well, I was just going to ask, you may be answering this in another talk or something, but with the the way that uh, Illuminate is in the, a bunch of components, how are you going to handle uh, all of the, the increase in pull requests and and all of the extra overheads going to go into managing that project. Yeah, so this is this might be a little technical, but uh, in Laravel 4, we have like 20 components. Every piece of Laravel 3 has been broken out into a separate component. So we have like auth, we have session, uh, we have view, database, you know, down the line, we have different components. And we then have one Laravel framework GitHub repository, which has all the code in it. And I actually have a night, there's a nightly job that runs at 3 a.m. that splits every component into those separate repos from the subfolder. So we just take pull requests on the one repository, the one main repository, because managing all 20 with pull requests and issues, you know, and some, some pull requests would span components, which would be weird because you have to make a pull request on one component 
and then make you know four course say this is associated with this over here and it would be a head. So having the one framework or having the one repo that we split on the nightly job is how we've kind of consolidated everything into one place you make issues and one place you make pull requests. So it should be similar to Laravel 3, even though there's probably going to be an increase in terms of quantity. And uh, you know, people like Dale and, and even you look over these stuff so you know, I mean, you can pull pull requests. And uh, you know, as the framework grows, we may have to address you know, how we're going to keep up. I'll close, I'll close down to like 30 issues one night, and then I'll wake up the next morning, it's like 45. So like, holy cow, like, they're coming in more than I close them. So yeah, I think we'll have to bring uh, but to get people more involved, you know, maybe figure out ways, how can we get people, you know, to that point where they're addressing core requests, how can we get them there faster? You know, so that, that might be something we need to work on pretty soon, especially with the release of where we're coming up, so. Any other questions? Are you aware of any uh, apps that are currently in development. So Coding Nighter kind of had Expression Engine yeah. to kind of help build its popularity. So if you got into Expression Engine and you're a developer, you naturally start to learn Code Igniter if you want to start building plugins or extensions. Mm -hmm. Are you aware of anything, or do you have any plans for building something comparable? I know it's a CMS question. Those are kind of... I do know there are plans. I do know that there are people who have um, even works with LSS in the past. I know I, they actually told me not to say too much, but I know there are people working on the CMS, and you know you have Pyro CMS, which is embracing Laravel 4 with uh, version 3, hopefully. So, uh, yeah, I think there's some things in the works. You know that I know a lot of people want to take on expression to be honest. Like they want to, they want to go head to head on Laravel 4. So, I think there's numerous people working on it, honestly, and possibly, I mean, probably more than one, probably two or three. So, yeah, I don't know when they're going to be done.
sound good. Mm -hmm. and we're going to have other different ways we can get us some code. So if you're expecting code, we've got code heavy talk coming up next. It's going to be good on that API development. So thanks so much for this first talk. And uh, we'll talk tomorrow about the future. So let's go to it.